Hi, this week I want to share some thoughts about the Pharisees, some of Jesus' primary antagonists in the Gospels. There's a time that sticks out in my memory where I was at a college uh, worship service and the preacher was talking about one of those moments in the Gospels where Jesus kind of goes head to head against the Pharisees. And this particular preacher was just slamming the Pharisees. They were really talking about how the Pharisees were self-righteous, about how they felt they could earn their salvation, and they, they really emphasized this idea that the Pharisees really set themselves up as just being the, the absolute enemies of the gospel. And as I was sitting there and I was listening to this person, I found myself getting offended on behalf of the Pharisees. Now, it wasn't like I was somebody who didn't like Jesus and so I wanted to root for his enemies. Uh, I was somebody who, who wanted to be a Christian, wanted to live as much as I could. And yet here I was uh, being offended by how this person was speaking about the Pharisees. And so in response to all of this, I started to look in my heart and I started to realize something about myself that I will never forget. Now, I don't know about you, but I have from time to time heard people get very romantic about uh, uh, what it would have been like if we were, could live at the same time as Jesus. If we could see him, if we could talk to him, if we could touch him, if we could hear the words that he had to say, how easy it would be to believe. Well, in that moment when I was thinking about why I was offended about the abuse of the Pharisees is because I realized that if I had been around during Jesus' day, there would be no question. I would absolutely have been one of the Pharisees. I would have been the kind of person who put a huge value on following the rules. I would be critical of anybody who didn't follow the rules, and I would judge other people based on whether or not they follow the rules better than I did. The thing is, I can't imagine that I'm really all by myself in this. It seems very hard for me to believe that absolutely everybody else in the whole church uh, would believe so easily when brought face to face with Jesus, and I and I alone would have been a Pharisee. I suspect that there are actually many of us in the church who have Pharisaic tendencies, but we may have been blinded to them because we're taught to say, well, those Pharisees, those were the enemies of Christ, whereas we want to follow him. And so one of my goals since this realization is to try to, to humanize the Pharisees, to try to show that there are ways in which we might not be as far from them as we might think, in ways in which we can maybe see some of their own behaviors and attitudes in ourselves. And I want to make sure I'm being absolutely clear. I'm not trying to defend the Pharisees for doing what they were doing. I'm not. I think they were wrong. I just want to show that they were reasonable if mistaken people. Because if we don't see them as reasonable people, when we look into our own hearts, we will never see anything that allows us to see that we were kind of like them at all. See, the thing is, while we might think that the Pharisees were being very self-righteous because of their emphasis on the rules, it's almost certain that they would have said the reason why they have such a big emphasis on the rules is precisely because they are not so righteous. It's simply not the case that most Pharisees thought that God loved them because they were so holy. It, the fact of the matter is that the idea of keeping kosher and all those other things that we think of the Pharisees as doing was just part of what it meant to be uh, participating in God's covenant with his people. They did it not because they thought they were going to somehow become more holy, but because to not do them would be seen as a rejection of the covenant God had made with his people. I think it's really important that we remember how the Pharisees came into existence in the first place. When Jerusalem was overthrown and destroyed in the 6th century BC, so many of the leaders were carted off to Babylon. And since they were moved to Babylon and there was no temple, the sacrificial system pretty much had to stop. Now, up until that point, the Israelite religious system tended to have two major aspects to it, a legal aspect and a cultic aspect. Now, cultic doesn't mean that it was a cult. It just refers to the sacrificial practice of the religion. And so when they have to stop the, the sacrificial side of things, uh, what do you do? And the answer seemed to be to double down on the legal side of things. And so when the Israelites then looked back over all of the law and the prophets, they started seeing over and over again these warnings that if the people didn't obey, they would be removed from the land that God had promised them. And reading this from the perspective of people who have actually been removed from their uh, ancestral lands, it became very easy for them to think that the reason why this happened was because they did not obey the law. And so what can you do when you make that kind of realization? Well, one of the things you can do is try to go through the Old Testament and find all the laws you can. You make sure you number them so that you never miss one, and you develop protocols to make sure you're following the law the way you're supposed to. I think that all of this is very important. The church has often portrayed the Pharisees as if they were only interested in maintaining control and teaching everybody that they had to follow all of their rules in order to get God to love them. Now, I can't doubt the fact that there probably were some Pharisees who did that, but I suspect a great many of them had much better intentions.
it's worth noticing that the abuses of the Pharisees didn't just come from nowhere. They came from a very specific situation. And it came from a, a situation that a lot of Christians, I think, should be able to understand. They had fallout for when they weren't being obedient, and so they wanted to fix that by being obedient. It was a fallout that they were still living in hundreds of years later during Jesus' time. And so for the Pharisees, or at least some of them, Jesus comes along and he seems to be completely disregarding one of their fundamental theological convictions. If we don't obey the law, we are going to be exiled. And he's going to teach other people to do that too. And it had got to have been infuriating for many of them. So not only would this mean that the Pharisees were losing power in general, this influence would almost certainly have the result, if it caught on, of teaching people to not obey the law and result in another destruction of Jerusalem. You know, it really isn't surprising then to see that when Jesus was executed, he was crucified, which was the death of a political revolutionary. So why do I think it's important that we practice looking at the Pharisees in a way that maybe, just maybe, we can see ourselves in them at least some of the time? It's because I think we are quite often faced with the temptation to do exactly the same kind of things that they did. Again, I don't know about you, but in my own life, I have from time to time made up these little rules to help myself uh, be obedient. You know, if there's somebody who I talk to and they routinely make me angry, I can make a rule for myself saying, well, you know what, I'm just not going to talk to them anymore. But you'll notice that following that rule doesn't actually help me deal with my anger. It just uh, uh, makes me have a way that I can avoid even having to deal with the issue of my anger. Now, on the one hand, this kind of technique might actually have the effect of reducing the overall level of anger I experience in my life, and that may be a good thing. The danger is when it becomes a partial solution that gets in the way of being a full solution, as if I were to take that little rule I've done for myself and then say, oh, I'm less angry than I used to be. I must be following Jesus the way I should. But if you read the Gospels carefully, you'll see that Jesus never once tells us that we're supposed to avoid the people who make us angry, but that we're supposed to love our neighbor, even the neighbor who drives us nuts like ourselves. And so I haven't dealt with my anger. I haven't grown in love. All I've done is made a rule in my life that helps to remove the symptom from my life. And so I conclude that since the symptom isn't as obvious, the underlying disease must be gone as well. It seems to me that the fundamental mistake of the Pharisees is not their desire to be holy. It's not their desire to teach people that they needed to do what they could to, to be obedient to God. And it's not even the recognition that obedience is hard work. It's that having come to the realization that obedience is very hard, they didn't commit to it. But instead, they substituted their own protocol in the place of God's commands, and they followed that instead. And that, I think, is alive and well in the church. Whenever we say to ourselves something like, well, of course I'm being faithful. I, I go to church every Sunday. Well, most Sundays. Well, at least sometimes. What we've done is we've substituted uh, going to church for being faithful as if those two things are always the same. Now, I'm not trying to pick on people who have a very good reason for why they're not in church every Sunday. What I'm trying to say is that whenever we use a metric other than actual faithfulness to decide whether we're being faithful, we may come to the point where we're so good at following our own rules for ourselves that we forget the fact that we may not be following God's rules. Of course, it, it really could be anything. It could be, well, of course I'm following Christ. I've memorized a whole bunch of Bible verses. Or it could be, of course I've given myself completely to Christ. I'm serving as a pastor of a church. Or it could be, I always sing the best praise songs. Or I go to the best church in town. Or I always listen to Christian radio in the car. Or I always just cry tears whenever this one song comes on. The biggest danger is that all of these Pharisaic substitutions will not just convince ourselves that everything's great, it'll convince our friends too. If we're surrounding ourselves with all of these tokens of the appearance of righteousness, uh, we may never actually be challenged and encouraged to pursue real obedience. This is a topic that's important to me because I have seen it in my own heart and life. And maybe you're one of those people who this doesn't apply to you, in which case, congratulations. But if you're like me and you see at least a little bit of this in yourself, go and learn from Jesus the way the Pharisees couldn't. Go and learn about actually following Jesus and not just following your own rules that you made up for faithfulness. It's harder, but I promise you it makes a difference. Well, that's all I have for this week. If you have any questions or topics you'd like me to take up, please send me an email at pastorstevig at gmail.com. If you like these videos or you find them engaging in some way, please consider liking and sharing them on the various social media platforms. If you'd like to subscribe to the channel where these are posted, it's at youtube.com forward slash tstevig1. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.